no civil answer, no doctor, no person. No one can tell you, oh, you'll be healed in six months, nine months, 12 months. So you don't know what to expect. This year was the most challenging, the most difficult. I got these terrible injuries, the house, the fires, so many things that are trying to help me off my feet. It's either gonna make you or break you. As a fan of the sport, can you give me your honest, objective opinion on Phil versus Sean Roden? What did you think about the win, and you know, how do you how do you feel about it? Uh, I think uh, Phil is a Phil is a champ, man. You know, he's a champ for a reason, seven-time champ for a reason. Where Phil said all the other poses, they were dominant over Sean, so he basically lost because of a midsection. Yeah, it's not a pose, but it's but. Of course, but, but, but then you gotta think, like, you, we bodybuilders, open bodybuilders, were, have been getting a lot of criticism for stomachs. Do you think social media is a gift or a curse to bodybuilding? Uh, I think it's a gift, yeah. I wouldn't say curse. I would say it's a gift because I think, as we were talking uh, before, man, I think social media is great for like bridging the gap um, of the awareness, um, you know, that, that we definitely, we, we most definitely need. I mean, look, man, we got, you have baseball players, MLB making half a million, signing half a billion dollar contracts. And, uh, you know, so I think social media is a way to get that, that type of awareness out there, get those type of, get those type of endorsements. Um, and we need the major players to come our direction. And social media is a great way uh, for, for that to happen. Um, because we need it in the time, I think bodybuilding, body, it used to be, you know, it's kind of taken maybe a step back a little bit because it used to be on ESPN, man. The O used to be on ESPN, you know, and it used to be at the Mandalay Bay. And now we're at the, now we're, we're not on ESPN anymore. We're, I hear people that tried to, um, see my show, see the O last year and catch me, they were like, oh, the, 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 the streaming thing had a glitch in it, so I missed you, Breon, and, and this and that. I'm like, man, come on, come on, you know? You want to have more of a mainstream recognition. Absolutely, 1,000%. More so of a mainstream recognition. I think we have uh, great personalities and, and great people to, to, you know, that they would more than happy, more than willing to be, uh, to do work with and, and, and to partner with um, and uh, and I think you know also our sport just is interesting like that you know to really tap into really what we do and to kind of just um, the the mentality of it and the, the strength of it um, you know when things get tough and all that to, to kind of just continue on with the pace of of the dieting and of the training when you're tired or uh, when you're not feeling, you know, when when the when when the the name of the game and you're in your sweet spot of when you're tired or maybe depleted, water depleted or whatever, is to perform. I think that's a story that that we really need to that the, the public really, you know, would have a great time uh, listening to and, and being a part of and knowing about, you know, and knowing about the people who who do it. Because I, I don't know how many, what, what percent would you say out there uh, do bodybuilding? 1%, maybe less than 1% of bodybuilders compete, you know? So uh, I think it would be a, a great world for them to know about, for sure. As a fan of the sport, can you give me your honest, objective opinion on Phil versus Sean Roden? What did you think about the win and you know, how do you, how do you feel about it? Uh, I think uh, Phil is a Phil is a champ, man. You know he's a champ for a reason, seven-time champ for a reason. Uh, Phil and everybody else, Phil knows himself that his his stomach started getting a little bit out of control. You know from year to year to year to year to year. Phil knows that he looked his best uh, at 2011, 2012 when he first won it. With his he had a classic physique up there. You know with his structure, with his waistline. Nobody was touching that. Nobody was touching that. And then you, then you have Sean, who has that 
that crazy uh, tapered waist, you know? And I think if, if, if it's getting out of control with Phil from year to year to year to year to year, and then you have Sean, who's already been there for, all, for years already, you know, six, five, four, three years, um, it was his time. It was his time. It's like, Phil, if you don't really, if you don't, if you don't get that under control, because that was the only thing, I think. I think that was the only thing. Where Phil said all the other poses, they were dominant over Sean. So he basically lost because of a midsection. Yeah. It's not a pose. It's, just... it's not a pose. But it's, but. I just want to be objective. I really want to know Of course, but, but, but then you got to think, like, you, we've, bodybuilders, open bodybuilders were, have been getting a lot of criticism for stomachs and for protruding guts, you know? For a, for, a, for a minute now. So that's gonna play a part into, and, and, and then also let's not forget the fans and the, the supporters. They don't like to see that, you know? And that, that takes away from the wow factor, right? They like to look at the open guys as superheroes. And a superhero uh, does not ha doesn't have that. It's like, oh, uh, maybe the guy can't move around, uh, you know, like we want him to with a bigger gut, you know. So um, I think if 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 Phil's stomach Phil's stomach kept getting worse, Sean still is there and in his prime, looking great. Well, I don't know, Sean, I guess is in his prime. I think Sean is in his 40s, man, still in his prime. But nevertheless, he he's he was right there. Sean's physique has always been looking great with, with a with wow factor of a classic physique, classic mass monster of a, of a waistline. So it was his time. Now, at the same time, Phil, uh, other than his waistline, I think uh, Phil's physique is still pretty superior. Pretty, superi so pretty superior. I think the lesson here is basically from going forward, if you can, even if you have the most dominant poses and your other body parts are superior, if you don't come in, you know, your stomach is not in shape, you can't win. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. A oh, absolutely. They would never give a classic, they would never let classic a classic guy win, you know, with a protruding gut or with, with a stomach that, uh, you know, got out of whack and just was not, because it just, it just throws everything off. It throws your V-taper off. It throws your lines off, you know? It throws the look off. You don't look in shape. You don't look in shape. And you don't, you know, how are you gonna crown a champion that really uh, doesn't look in shape and doesn't have that in control? So, uh, but also think, I also think uh, a problem too with the, the open guys is that they play the size game a little too much and then what happens is you play the size game too much, you start to lose details in the body. You start to lose conditioning, you start to lose, lose lines and like seeing muscle fibers when you flex. So um, that's not a good thing. Either. I don't know if Phil, to be honest with you, I, I probably thought Phil lost some of that too. Lost some muscle fibers and, and lost some, some lines and some pretty lines. Phil's like the, the prettiness. You can still say that the open guys' physiques are, are pretty nice flowing physiques. There, there are some out there that Phil most definitely had pretty nice flowing physique, classic style, when he first got into the game. Then he started playing the size game a little bit with Big Rami, I think, with Roly, I think, and then those guys are huge. But look at, um, look at Rami's best look when he got second place. When was that, last year? He was at his smallest, his lightest weight. It was his best look, you know? Everybody already has on that level. They already have enough muscle already have it so you it's just now about the details and the lines and the separation and the conditioning stop playing the size game now if I were gonna go to, uh, to the to the open you know I would have to play the size game you know a little bit you know because because you know it is a muscle a, a muscle contest for sure for sure but when you get so much and when you get enough you know then um, you have enough and you need to always keep that in mind because you know the details the details and the separation of the, um, from one muscle to the next, now with all your muscle, it makes it even look that much bigger anyway. When you, when you come down, yeah, it's all about the illusion. And I wanna say even when Dexter won his title in 08, he was at his lightest weight. I think every, you can, you, I mean, it's like, that's even history. That's even going back to everybody's uh, best look. I think if you asked everybody, all the Olympias, 
uh, all the Mr. Olympias, everybody, what was your best look? They probably would say that it was um, their lightest weight, even with the uh, uh, Flex uh, Wheeler. I know he, I remember every, at 93, his best look was when he was only about 216, 17 pounds. I think you know, once you're Olympia, Mr. Olympia, you have to do some kind of improvements. Yeah, you have to get a little bit bigger, but we're t what I'm talking about size game to where they're like, you know, they're, they're trying to put on, uh, yeah, they're trying to put on maybe 10 pounds a year. Um, and and, and, and it's, it, it's, it, what, what, what happens is you really can't put on 10 pounds of lean muscle, of pure lean muscle a year. Can't do it. Can't do it. The body doesn't work that way. With great Jeanette, it doesn't work that way. I've tried. I've tried. Trust me. Yeah, it's only, you can only do it with pure lean muscle. Yeah, it's both. It's fat and muscle. Pure lean muscle, maybe, you know. Of just weight. You know, man, I, I could put on 10 pounds of fat and, and uh, by next week, yeah, eat some pancakes and eat them every day and eat them all for five, six meals. I could do that, you know, and then they kind of get it construed. Oh, I put on muscle. <laughs> nah, you no, you didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs>